Okay, we are live. So what we're gonna be talking about is Unity Gaming Services, which is not quite live just yet, but it will be, they said in June, so we only got like a couple of weeks before um, this all goes live, but these are a um, series of services that Unity has acquired and created over the years to help you run your game uh, after it's been launched. So these are things like um, there's Cloud Code, which lets you run snippets of code uh, without having a server running on the back end. Um, Cloud Save, which is some storage for player data. Uh, In-game economies, which is items, stores, um, like loot boxes fall under this stuff. Authentication is where you can authenticate with uh, Steam, Google, Facebook, and they also have anonymous authentication, so you don't need to log in with anything. Um, analytics is pretty self-explanatory. Um, cloud content delivery is, um, is basically storage buckets like AWS, where you can uh, host files and you have your app download them for like DLC purposes and stuff. Uh, remote config is uh, similar to cloud save, but it's for your entire project. So your app can have different values stored um, up on Unity's cloud that your, your app can um, read from and you can change things without actually having to redeploy your actual, your actual program. Uh, we're not gonna get into the acquisition and uh, ad monetization and stuff, but that's all part of this too. Yes, there's a whole netcode lobby relay service as well. Uh, they do have multiplay where you can host your own servers if you're doing something a lot more complicated, uh, like an MMO or first person shooter. Uh, those will, you need to have a different a server running for those games. But for like, you know, little mobile games, some VR games where you don't need constant contact with the server, that's what the cloud code would be for. And we'll go over some of those examples that they, they just put out uh, about two weeks ago. Uh, so these are not free per se. There is a free tier, full pricing details. So you can start out using these things for free. Um, for cloud save, it's they're doing it by reads and writes per month, um, and also I guess gigabits per month as well for storage. Uh, for the economy, I'll show you uh, what they mean by the reads and writes, but these are basically API calls. So you'll have a, a million reads and 10,000 writes. Uh, a lot of these, um, there was a calculator, uh, maybe that was for the old system, that would ha help you kind of estimate like your user count versus what these uh, numbers actually mean. But um, while you're in development, you will never ever breach any of these. Um, and even after you launch, you'll probably have, you know, a good couple thousand users per month before you, you break any of these, uh, the free tier. Uh, see the ads, the relay. Went through some of this um, during the multiplayer talks, but for uh, in case you're interested for the multiplayer stuff, their uh, relay server is kind of how you do a peer-to-peer uh, -peer game. If you're not connecting to a dedicated server, you can have uh, like player hosts, and the relay service is what would allow me to connect to you without you know the game developer having to run their own servers. 
uh, the lobby is similar to this in that um, it's kind of a it's a pre-staging area before you actually connect to the game. So you can use the lobby to connect with people to get their relay information so you can actually connect to them. Uh, the multiplayer is their server stuff. Uh, if you have to ask, you can't afford it. Same with uh, Vibox. It's something they purchased a bit more recently. This is for uh, voice chat. And uh, a lot of games actually use Vibox. Um, I think they had uh, Apex Legends, I think, uses Vibox. And Riot might. No, they might use their own stuff. Uh, but yeah. Actually, we can go back here, here. So they released uh, these about two weeks ago onto GitHub. Uh, this is the services sample use cases. And we'll go through um, a bit of these and uh, how they work. And it's going to be loot boxes, starter packs, seasonal events, uh, analytics, A-B testing, uh, battle pass, virtual shop, daily rewards, kind of the standard things that you see in most mobile apps these days. And the service here, what you will need after you, well, if you clone it from the GitHub, you don't actually have to do any of this, but for the, in the package manager, you will see um, analytics, authentication, cloud code, cloud content, cloud save, uh, the economy, along with some of them come with uh, examples that you can import as well. Uh, the mediation, this is part of their, their ad system. We're not going to look into that because that's for iOS and Android only. And the remote config stuff as well. You can see, not that, in the Preferences, services, uh, general settings, general settings. Here. So with this particular project here, this is downloaded uh, straight from the GitHub. Um, this is not going to be, uh, well, it's, it's linked to uh, Unity's uh, dashboard that, uh, that they're running on their side. So um, these will all just work out of the box, but I'll show you how to actually set these up on your own dashboard if you so choose. So what you would do is uh, on your Unity dashboard, you create a new project and then in the editor here, you would choose uh, we would choose game developers, create a project ID, and then that would link up to the website. Actually, I think I can just do it from Unity. Link. We can. Does it right click? It does not. Uh, we can see it from, no, it won't, okay, back to the web, and it is that dashboard, dot unity 3D, I think that's it. And 
Okay. So this is a project I created earlier uh, this week and could probably connect to it um, with this project here and it should all work, but we'll do that later because it might break everything. But this is just a list of currently like all the projects I have. Uh, they're different. Uh, if you have Unity Teams, which I think is actually going away, if it's not already gone. Uh, if you have different, um, you want to bring people on to your project to work on it, to manage some of uh, these suites here, this is where you would go about adding people to your organization, setting up your payment information so they can pay you when you get ads and stuff like that. And honestly, if you go over the free tier, they will charge you. Very much, yeah. It's basically identical to uh, a lot of those. You have your data explorers, your funnels, segments, market insights, all that good stuff. Actually, this is legacy analytics. Link here. Uh, so for the analytics, there's a bunch of standard ones that will just uh, that come with it that you can just turn on. So you can see whenever your game has started, you'll get an event when it's ended, uh, your different client devices. Uh, if you enable all of these, which I think they just enable by default, then you can just see like how your, your app is actually doing. And this works cross-platform regardless of uh, mobile or um, PC. Uh, we're not going to dive too much into the analytics, except for some of the event browsing. I don't know. We might not even get to that part. Um, you use a lot of those metrics for? Uh, like for marketing and just um, uh, just so you know like where your users are, uh, basically so you can sell their data. So you can, you know, you know where your your user base is, what devices they're using, um, just various things that. Um, so like you could set up analytics for each level that somebody completes. So you can tell if the majority of your users are even completing your game, or if they're getting stuck on a certain level, or if they're not getting past tutorial for some reason. Uh, DevOps is cloud build. We're not going to get into to this stuff yet, but um, this will basically build your game for you on their cloud and actually deploy it. So if you have a uh, test group of users on like iOS or Android or whatever, you can build like a nightly test build, deploy it, and then those users will get an automatic update um, and continue testing for uh, for that build. And this will tell you, you know, your build times, how many succeeded and failed, and all that good stuff. Uh, you'll see a lot of this will get, like, automated, with, like, automated, like, continuous integration and stuff like that. Uh, what we are going to focus on is the live ops part. And like I said, it is still in beta for the moment, but that should be coming out of beta real soon. Uh, the growth is for user acquisition, and this is just um, ads, basically, ads for your game, not ads that are playing in your game. And the monetization ads, these are the ads that would be in your game. and then the multiplayer stuff. So back to live ops. Uh, first thing we'll do is take a drink of water.
we're going to look at the economy. This is going to be your in-game items. If it loads. There we go. Dismiss. Okay. <clears throat> so, your items here, you don't get a whole lot of ways to search and sort these. But your items come in a couple of different types. You can add one here. So we have currencies, uh, which is basically like your gold, coins, whatnot, whatever um, that you want to like increment or decrement throughout uh, the game. These would be like various stackable, fungible tokens. Your inventory items would be, I've got a sword and a shield that will show up in your player inventory. Uh, I'll show you where that comes in. Oh, we can show you now. Uh, virtual purchases are uh, bundles that you would purchase from a store. So like a virtual purchase here would just be whatever. And for it, you have a, basically a resource that this would actually buy. So what you would get when you actually buy this thing, you can bundle in whatever stuff you've already made. So we could just have a coin pack, whatever, 100, and then how much this would cost, and whatever, a gem. You can also add custom data as a JSON um, for any additional information that you might want to put on here. And then we add. And here. So here's our new virtual item. Now, you have to make sure that you publish anytime you make any changes here. Uh, or else no one will actually see that actually happen. And speaking of publishing, you should absolutely never be changing stuff in production like I'm doing here. Uh, this is what is live out to everybody. And if you delete something you aren't supposed to or change something, that would be really bad. So what you can do is you can make a development environment. Here, dev. And then we can switch to our dev environment. But I don't want to do that because I made everything in production. Okay. Configuration and publish. Just to make sure. Okay. So also in the economy, I really wish they would let you list all your players, but They do not. So what I can do, we'll come back to this. So the remote config. So this is something that you can access uh, from your code that uh, when you query it, you will ask for one of these keys. They're all key value pairs. So you'll ask for one of these keys or all of them, actually. You can um, so make an empty request and it'll dump out all of this to you. Um, and it will give you back whatever the value is for that specific key. 
uh, to add a new key here, you just enter a name. And then the types are your regular primitives, your Booleans, floats, strings, integers, or long. You also have a JSON uh, section here. So you can just make a JSON blob, which is, we've done a lot of that here as well. So for, this would be uh, for, let's say, uh, your daily rewards here. Look at that. And it's just from, I think it's exactly 31 of these. So one for each day, you'll see that, you know, day one is 10 coins, day two, three, all the way to 30 something. Uh, and then we have a bonus reward here. And that's all in just standard JSON. JSON is JavaScript object notation. So it's just JavaScript. I think it's just normal JavaScript. You can. Yeah, Unity just with the last update, 2021, I think, they incorporated uh, JSON.net. And we'll see some of that here. So in cloud code, uh, these are scripts that run in Unity's cloud. So right now, there's only one type of, of script. They call them API scripts. And these can interact with the other uh, APIs, like your economy, cloud save, uh, authentication, and whatnot. Uh, for right now, I believe, I don't know if there's any plans on changing this, but uh, the cloud scripts are all done in JavaScript. Uh, normally, Unity uses C Sharp. Uh, apparently, there's more types coming soon. I'm really hoping they do uh, a lot of C Sharp scripts here in, in the future. Uh, here you can pass in parameters to your script from your actual game. Uh, the same uh, types, I believe, string, numbers, or numeric, Boolean, JSON, or any. Uh, JavaScript is typeless, so it doesn't really matter what you actually call it. Uh, delete that. Wait. So we add this here. Uh, they give you an example code, and I'm not gonna zoom that in. Uh, it's fine. Um, this is just a roll a six sided die script here. It uses a um, low dash or at seventeen. I'm not too familiar with JavaScript. I believe that's just a standard library. For stuff. And uh, this does not actually interact with any of the other APIs, so I can't show you that. But what this does is uh, all of your cloud scripts just have uh, this wrapper here, and it will automatically uh, pass through the parameters, uh, your context, and a logger. And when this script gets called, it automatically will run whatever is in, in here, and it runs it once. So if you remember back in our tiers here for cloud code, uh, you have 1 million invocations or, or also 200 compute hours. So back here, just keep in mind, you don't want to do crazy loops uh, in your cloud script because that's costing you money. You can also um, 
run the script from here. Just run it. And this is what uh, your C sharp code will actually uh, end up with when you call this test script. And it will just give you back this little JSON little bit here of roll six, side six. Uh, you should also publish as well if you want to actually um, have access to this. So just don't forget to do that. Let me go publish it. Wow. Uh, the player ID here is part of the context that you get sent. So you can uh, just kind of fake different uh, player IDs. Cloud save, no function. Uh, I can't actually show this, but cloud save is per player when you actually um, authenticate with the service. It will generate a player for you. Uh, the player ID will be just like what we saw in the cloud script little uh, player GUID thing. Uh, this is just also a bunch of key value pairs. It will look identical to the um, remote config. You'll have your name, value, uh, string, key here, and then your value. If I link up this project, uh, we'll see if we can see something show up here. Uh, the cloud content delivery, I'm not going to actually show, but it's here. This is where you would create uh, various buckets and whatnot. Uh, I think it is just a flat monthly fee for this, um, plus a free trial, which I'm not going to start. Uh, player management, this is the same as everywhere where you see find a player, it's just this screen. And then the authentication uh, here. Uh, so yeah, this, these are the different uh, providers that you currently have access to. I'm really hoping that Unity makes their own provider. That would make things a lot easier. But for now, you can um, add a provider, whatever you want to go with, Facebook or Apple or Steam. Uh, you basically just add in your app ID and your API key that you get from, from said uh, provider. I think Steam is still $100 to get a developer account. Google and Apple, I believe, are similar. Facebook, I think you can just actually just get it. Same with Google. Uh, yeah, okay, player engagement here. So overrides, we've got a few of these here. Okay. So overrides um, will, these basically will override different uh, aspects here from the economy or from uh, remote config or whatnot. We can just create one here. <clears throat> so we can create an override, call it test, whatever. Target, we can tell it which group of users you want to target, we can, there is Excel, Excel is a JavaScript expression language, I think it's called. It's similar to uh, JSON, but it's just like, you can, uh, you can give it like user dates. So like, I think it is user dot, does it have completion? No. That's not going to work. 
you can give it, uh, actually, we can show the. That's all. Yeah. Uh, the fall of it, I think, uses Texels. Yeah. So for the audience here for the fall event, we have a, uh, I believe it is a cloud save for the user that's called timestamp minutes. And this will just get saved to the user every whatever minute or so. And for uh, the users that have this timestamp minutes equals to zero, one or two, then they get funneled into the fall event. And the fall event will override the, I think this is the remote config. Pretty sure that is remote config. Choose content type. We're gonna add another one. So the things you can uh, config, things you can change through overrides is the remote config, virtual purchases. So if you have a, a store that has a seasonal deals or whatever, you could override virtual purchases. You can have short-term sales for currencies as well as virtual purchases, inventory items. Uh, you can have you know holiday items come up for sale or just dropping your game for specific amounts of time. All right. And you notice push notifications. Uh, and I believe that's only for iOS and Android. Yeah. All right. Let's hop into Unity here. Does everyone have at least some experience with Unity? <laughs> no? <laughs> it's okay. So this is the Unity game engine. We have, real quick, a hierarchy here on the left. These are all dockable and switchable and whatnot. Um, I prefer my hierarchy on the left with the inspector on the right. I have my console here, which will give me errors here at the bottom. And project should be here. And I only get one column. There. With that. So the hierarchy is everything that is in the current scene. Uh, the project is all the assets that you have uh, in this project that you can use. And the inspector shows you different properties of stuff. So what? Do we look at first? Yep. All right, so let's clear that. And we will look at, it's just the loot box. It's simple. So I've already run this a couple of times on this uh, particular player here. And we can look at 
Note box scripts. Like we'll look at the loot box scene manager. Okay, I use uh, VS Code here for for my IDE. <clears throat> so, in order to use the services, um, you just basically have their using statements at the top for authentication. Uh, this is just using Cloud Code and then the core. Before you do anything, you have to uh, initialize your services and this is done with a task so it is awaited so this will pause while it is actually um, initializing all the services and so after we initialize we can use the authentication service here which will load up IntelliSense eventually. So your authentication service is where you actually can sign in. And here you can sign in anonymously. You can sign in with Google, with Facebook, all the ones that you saw earlier, uh, you can uh, do that here. This is just logging in silently, uh, anonymously. And this, I believe, is using your system GUID, I think. And it's also saving this into your system registry. Hey, there we go. So the next time you actually log in, when it initializes, it will actually look for the registry item. <clears throat> and then we'll try to sign you in with that same, uh, same account. So if we're already signed in, then the authentication service will give us a player ID. And that player ID is what is showing up here. You see that here as the player ID. This is also what's, what gets saved in the, uh, I don't think this will actually work in the dashboard when you go to player management here. Here. you would search for this and then it would pull up uh, that player that's not going to pull up anything here because this is not uh, what i'm actually running so what our loot box here is doing it's super simple uh all it's doing here is on grant random currency which is where we are putting our button i do believe uh this is how you call it's not not here so this this is in the our cloud code manager. Uh, we have to make sure that we are still signed in. Uh, and then we make this call to our cloud code service, which just makes a endpoint call here. Uh, this is what it will return. And this is the actual name of the um, script that is in the dashboard. So here in our cloud code, I think I may have actually named it something different.
uh, yeah, I just called it grant random currency. So when this, when you hit that button, it will roll through this JavaScript here. We have our currency IDs that we made in our economy here. We have our coin, gem, pearl, and star. It will pick a random currency ID, pick a random account, and then it will call a grant currency. And the grant currency will, I think that is just a, yeah. So grant currency here just calls the currency API and it will increment player balance and you give it your project ID, your player ID, the currency, and um, options here. So this is gonna be the amount. And that's it. How much easier is this to now that they have all these like, systems in place already? Uh, very, because normally you would have to run a server yourself as like a like Node.js server or something that you throw in your closet to just uh, you know run these scripts. Um, Norm Core. Yes. Yeah. Probably not. Normcore is actually really easy to use, and uh, you don't have to interface with um, with any server side code with that at it's all. Really yeah, okay. yeah. So like on here, like you made the coin gen pearl star. What are this other code like? Did you have to go through and write to implement the two files? Uh, this is it. Just, uh, so this whole box or like just those items within all of this? Uh, this code itself was actually supplied by Unity, but the only thing you need uh, to implement something like this yourself is the coins from your economy. Mm -hmm. uh, that's really it. Wow. Yeah, you just make your coins, you can feed it the IDs, and you just tell it what to increment, and it's just this one call, and you know all it does is here when you open a loot box, it will just give me a random something here. There's no special, you know, animations or anything like that. You could do that, but um, you don't actually need to. Click the button, get the thing. Did you assign weights to, or could you assign like weights to the Oh yeah. Absolutely good. And that's just in uh, in this pick random currency or whatever. This is just straight up math.random. So you could have weights for all of this stuff. You can get as complicated as you want, really. And then in, I'm going actually save. Uh, so yeah, the increment uh, currency balance automatically increments it on the dashboard. So you don't actually have to manually save it or anything like that. Uh, this will show up in your find player. Uh, this will have a section for currency and a section for uh, inventory items. So if we back out, and the next thing here is, this is a loot box with a cooldown. So for this one, here,
when we click the, this is the view. We do all the same things. We initialize, we sign in anonymously, we're signing in with the same user we did before. And here, when we actually um, click the button, it also sends when we, when we did it. So we have a cooldown time that is all done through the cloud code as well. And that's in uh, I really wish it would save some of these things. Cooldown status. So the other thing that Cloud Code gives you is uh, server authority. So you could do all of this stuff on your client, um, but you never want to trust your client, especially when you're dealing with in-game items and potentially um, real money purchases. Is there because if it's all on the client, they can hack it. So generally, when you're doing anything over the network, you never want to trust the client at all. So here we can use our cloud API to get our uh, grant time reward or grant time reward time. That's awkward. And I believe there is a uh, it doesn't actually save it here. That's yeah, layer stuff. Oop, 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 can grant. Lock time. Wink. So in the uh, GitHub project here, it has the actual um, JavaScript code. Oh, God damn it. What? Uh, so yeah, this is all the code here. Um, this doesn't actually run on your client, but if you wanted to implement this yourself, this is the code that you would just copy paste into the uh, cloud script. So this is how you would do a uh, one-time claimed uh, starter pack. This is just saving a, um, a key un into your player's cloud storage uh, that just has a timestamp of when you clicked on the starter pack. So you can't just do it twice. Uh, I think I can just give myself more gems though. We can reset it. So resetting the starter pack will just delete that key from the cloud storage. So I can click on this here again. And this starter pack uh, is a virtual purchase, which is from our economy, which is... Start 
Porter pack. Starter pack. It costs 10 gems, rewards, whatever. <clears throat> the other cool thing about um, having things on this back end is that you can change all of this stuff uh, without having to take your game offline or push out app updates and stuff. So all of this is just updating in real time. Now, seasonal events is really cool. This is using the um, overrides that we mentioned earlier, and that uh, every, I think it's actually every frame. You really wouldn't do this every frame normally, but since these seasons last two minutes or three minutes, uh, it's going to be checking every frame for whether or not the actual uh, event has changed. I guess we should do this before it runs out. Check the rewards. And I can't do it anymore until the next changes. So this is being done through addressables, which is not something we're going to get into right now, but this is how you can um, download and um, assets dynamically, basically. So this addressables here Right now, it is local on this machine, uh, but this addressable's address can be any website address. So if you have something stored out on AWS or Azure or wherever, uh, you can download and display whatever that is uh, from uh, in your game. So if you have special one-off events, or if you have like holiday events and stuff, you don't have to push out a whole new DLC for it. You can just use the addressables to download whatever content you want. That's also part of what that um, uh, cloud content delivery is. This is Unity's version of that. Let us look at buckets. Nope. So, let's jump down to Daily rewards. Actually, we do the battle pass. The battle pass is kind of a uh, advanced version of the seasonal events. It actually uses the the same overrides, but it also has uh, tiers for for the free pass and also the battle pass. And uh, what this does is just um, as I gain XP and link up through here. I can claim these and I can buy it. Premium stuff here. Yep. And then once it takes over to the summer event, uh, it's gonna reset. Probably should have made this quicker. Mm -hmm. 
is also a revenue source. Before battle passes and whatnot, you just had monthly subscriptions to games. And now this is like, you know, $10 a tier for, for your battle pass. And folks will gladly Yeah, this is one of the few. I think only, what, World of Warcraft, EVE Online. <laughs> yeah. So here for the overrides. I mentioned like the event here. So this, whenever the minute is at eight or nine, this is the summer event. So 28, 29, uh, this will be everybody. So everyone is invited to this event. And these are the overrides. This is, I believe, just all of the um, remote config stuff. Yeah. For various things, we've got the event key, uh, the daily rewards, we have a battle pass tiers. So in the remote config, those are empty. But in our overrides, we override those to give them the things like for the battle pass rewards, we can look at edit content. Yeah. So our free tier uh, just is just straight down the line for tier one through ten, I think, ten or fifteen. And we give it the uh, addressables link so it knows what um, icon to display and how many. And that's it. So when we click on said tier, uh, it will grant us whatever ID is on that tier. And same for the uh, paid tier. For the premium. Uh, it's literally the same thing. I just rearranged them. All right. Uh, the other thing we can do super easy is Uh, you can do A-B tests. This is something you don't see out in the wild or actually you don't notice uh, because they don't actually tell you they're doing this. But um, what they'll do is they can put you into a secret group that has different difficulty uh, values assigned to you. So this is how they would test. Usually they'll do this for ads or whatever. So they'll give one group or one, one amount of ads, another group a different set of ads, and then they'll compare which ones have higher click-through rates and stuff like that. So in this, Group D gains uh, 10 experience and needs 50 points to level up. And then Group D, uh, I don't want to Sign in as a new player because I'll lose, lose mine. But you can sign in as a new player, get a new group. It's randomly assigned. Uh, that is what uh, this override is for. Uh, this just grants everybody uh, one of these content groups. Uh, so we have uh, 
here, group one with 100 points needed to level. Uh, B has 80, 50, and 30. Uh, and then these are the actual percentages of people. This is split evenly. You can make this whatever you want. No. And virtual store, and then we'll hit the Maybe daily rewards? I have not seen daily rewards. So this uh, daily rewards thing is, you've seen these in your mobile apps, that uh, every, every day you can claim a new reward. Uh, this is set to, I guess, 15 seconds per day. You'll see it slowly counting down. Even if I miss uh, a day or two, And then basically once I grab all of these, anytime I click these, it's just uh, calling a uh, cloud script to grant me this item. And it won't let me click until the time is up. Uh, there is also a command batching is something that you'll really want to look into because you are limited in your API calls. And um, so if you just need to, you know, read and write just whenever uh, the player closes the app, that would probably save you a lot of API calls when you're, um, you know, doing things rapidly, right? Like if you were, you know, playing Diablo or something, you wouldn't want to make a call every time you killed an enemy. Uh, you would run out of API calls very quickly that way. So with this way, you would batch these up and then every whatever, I guess this is what every five seconds or whatever, it will, I guess it's every five turns, it will go and um, grant me this experience. Instead of doing it each time, it just batches them all up, six at a time. There's an idle clicker game. Um, that's all this game is, but uh, it is keeping track of the last time that you uh, put down a well, so we can leave and come back and we will gradually get more and more water. That's all done through uh, cloud code as well. And the last thing is ads. I don't think will actually run. Huh, maybe it will. So, what this will do is, huh, okay, that does kind of work. Uh, and then this will run your, your actual ad. So it's kind of more of a uh, uh, interactive ad thing. So you can either claim your uh, 50 gems or skip the ad and just get the 25. All right, so 
We've got a little bit of time left here. Let's see if we can break everything. So if we go into our services and our settings, and then here, use an existing project. Cases. Yes. Okay. Let's see. We'll test uh, some of these. change some things. So in mine, Cloud Code Manager, I believe I just called this At the very least, I can show you that cloud. to uh reload that kind of worked Let's see if we can find this player. Okay. Well, anyways, we know that it's authenticating at least. So this is the player that we just made. And we've got our 10 gems and one star. This is our cloud save. I don't know if that actually worked. Uh, it tried to work. 
So your, your cloud save, it does have some limits here. Uh, let's see, in... So when you click on the links here in the GitHub, it'll take you to the documentation. So in Cloud Save, and these are up to date for the most part. So our data format. So basically we have a limit of uh, 16 kilobytes uh, of that JSON data. Uh, I believe that is, I forget how many characters that actually is, but um, it's more than enough for what most people would actually do with it. Uh, you do have a maximum character size limit for your player name and 200 slots of data per player. So don't go too nuts with it. Did AB test work at all? Does anybody have any questions? <laughs> uh, in the game, there is, I think if you're using the lobby system, I think it's like a hundred person limit, I think, and that's just a soft limit. It just depends on what your actual servers can can handle. All right, let's try this again. No. What the hell? That's annoying. All right, let's try. Test new person. Win group D this time. That still did not work. I don't know why everything broke, but it did. Not found. Ah. All right, well, that's basically it. Um, I'll figure out why this broke. You can hit me up on Discord if you got any other questions about it. Yeah, it can be. I don't know if that's planned, but we totally could.
go. I do. Do I have that? We'll check. Anyways. Uh, so yeah. Let us. 